Hi everyone, this is John with Homeroom Studios at homeroomstudios.com. Today I'm going to be showing you just the very basics of setting up buses and aux sends and returns to use plugins like reverbs, delays, choruses, etc. Uh, here's our mix. I just have one guitar track um, with two microphones. So it's one guitar, two microphone tracks. So let's take a listen. Okay. Now this is very basic right now, but if I were to add drums, bass, um, some keyboards, strings, vocals, everything else down the road, I may want to come back and adjust the levels of this guitar track. Um, but it's two microphones, but it's one guitar. So since I have I have the two microphones balanced pretty well right now, but down the road I may want to come back and adjust the levels of the guitar as a whole. Um, and Without bussing, I would have to use the group function, which would be to group them together so the faders move together like this. Now the problem with grouping is that if I have any aux sends set up, whether they're post fader or pre fader, moving this fader up and down will mess up the send levels that I have up here. You know, it, it could mess up the balance between um, the aux sends and the actual level of the channel and that'd be bad also if I have any automation written to any of these tracks it won't even let me adjust the fader it'll just snap back to where it was it won't let me do it so that is where buses come in handy so let's create our bus track that we're going to be using so it's track new and then in that it's going to be a stereo aux input right there AUX Okay, and we're going to label this guitar bus because we're using a guitar. This is going to be a guitar. And now basically how this works, how it's routed, is that these tracks are going to be funneled down into this track, which will then funnel down into the master track. Okay, so let's think of it as like a funnel. And the tracks are just starting out with, you're starting out with all these tracks and then you're sending them to one convenient place. So eventually this fader right here will control the level of these two microphones at the same time without messing with these faders, okay, without touching these. So let's set up our input. Same way you'd set up an input on a track. Let's start with select a bus, any bus, any open bus that you have. We'll do one and two since we don't have anything set up right now. And now you want to change the output on whatever tracks you want to send to the bus. So we have our guitars here. We want to send these two tracks to the bus. So we want to change the outputs on these two tracks to match the input on the bus tracks. That's how you know what's being sent where. Or whatever, look at the output of the track and find where the corresponding input is. And that's where you know where things are being sent. So we'll do that with both of them. And that's that's basically it with setting up buses. You do that with however many tracks you have. And there we go. And then when I play the song, now this fader is controlling the overall volume. Okay? This controls just the guitars. So if I were to have a vocal track or something else, I'd be hearing the vocals right now, no guitars. And now the guitars can be brought in. And as you see, these faders are untouched. It's a nice tool to use. All right, now that we have our bus set up, let's put some reverb on this guitar. So again, we're gonna add the same track. We're gonna add another stereo aux. So do that, same thing. Let's label this reverb. Let's do the same thing with the input. Let's choose the next one down the line. Again, you could choose any, bus three and four. Now with reverb, you wanna use your sends up here, okay? What this does is it splits the signal and sends some of it to wherever you have it designated. For this tutorial, I'm going to send the guitar, part of the guitar track, to this reverb, which will then be sent to the master fader. So I'm going to put the reverb on the guitar as a whole, as opposed to the individual microphones. You can do whichever. It's really uh, a lot of things in Pro Tools. It depends. It's it's an art form. So it, mixing is an art form. So it really depends. Um, on the project, the sound, what the desired effect is. So we want to send our guitar to bus 3 and 4. 
So now a part, this signal has now been split. Think of like a Y. So it's been split. Part of it's going to here and part of it's going to be going to here. So how much we want to send to this track is through this fader or this little one over here. You can change the view in view, sends A and E. Uh, assignments will show all the different AUX assignments. We'll go. We'll stick with this for now since this is what the default is when you open Pro Tools. So we have our bus. Now before we go playing around with this level, let's add the reverb. You want to put the reverb on the actual track that says reverb. So let's go to our inserts. Reverb, we're just going to choose the one that comes with Pro Tools, Dverb, and let's just choose a preset for now. I'm not going to go into the parameters of uh, reverb and how they work. We'll just choose a medium room. Looks good. We'll stick with this one. So now we're going to listen to our guitar track, and we're going to just raise this fader until you, you get the desired reverb sound that you want. So right now we're dry. This is completely dry. If we do this hear that we have all this reverb this is the most that you can send to the reverb so let's get it at a good balance let's send a lot so you can notice it right there right there sounds pretty good it adds depth to the song pre and post fader is a very important button to know what it does it basically does what it says. Pre-fader and post-fader. It's talking about this fader. Whatever fader the send is on. Whatever channel the send is on. If you have pre-fader pressed in and it's lit up blue, that means that it this fader is its own mix. It has nothing to do with this. They're not linked at all. So if I were to play the song and turn this fader down, all we'd hear was the reverb. You hear that? Now we can turn this up to bring in more dry guitar. Here. If we were post fader, it means after this fader. This fader controls this level, the level of the send. Um, so if I play the song and I turn this fader down, it turns down both reverb and dry guitar. They're linked, okay? And this right here is the very basic bare bones setup of using a bus and an aux send to put a reverb or other any other desired plugin or effect onto a track. So there you go. I'm John at Homeroom Studios. The website's homeroomstudios.com. Check out the uh, samples, client lists. Check out our studio blog, homeroomrecording.blogspot.com. I blog about various things in the industry product reviews, just things I like, uh, music related. So definitely check that out and happy mixing.